Welcome to the Hockey Writers Prospect Corner, a show with our top prospects writing crew, bringing you the latest news, analysis, scouting reports, mocks, rankings, and much more. From the world juniors to the NHL draft floor, from the farm to the NHL, our team covers everything that happens in the world of prospects. So sit back, grab a notebook, and get ready for Prospect Corner. Prospect Corner. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Prospect Corner presented by the Hockey Writers. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some NHL prospects who have been earning some attention throughout the NHL's preseason uh, and some that are playing elsewhere, I'm sure, as well. Uh, I'm your host, Logan Horn, and today I'm joined by my co-hosts and fellow prospect analysts, Matthew Zator and Peter Barracchini. Peter, how are you doing today? Doing good, yeah. I, I mean, amazing what a week can do with all the hockey being played and all the prospects that we're seeing right now. And everyone's just jumping off the page consistently. So, yeah, this is going to be a fun one. Yeah, absolutely. There's always always some surprises this time of year. Guys that look a little more NHL ready than you might have expected. Also, people overreacting to performances <laughs> when they're playing against essentially AHL rosters instead of NHL rosters can still be really valuable. Uh uh, pieces of information there still but um lots lots to talk about i sometimes I the ahl ro- yeah. sometimes the ahl rosters are better than the nhl rosters as we've seen <laughs> quite a bit so yeah it, it happens i mean to be fair sometimes it's not so true matt you know yeah. that watching the the flames like top half of their mm-hmm. nhl lineup beat the ahl canucks with a few added guys 10 nothing a week or so ago <laughs> I'm sure you can attest to the fact that the NHL is a little better sometimes, mm-hmm. but there is actually, you know, some good crossover. It's good to, good to see some good hockey without some of the stars sometimes too. Um, Matt, how are you doing though? Preseason's winding on as we're recording this, we're halfway through for most teams. So how are you doing? Doing good. Yeah. That's uh, since that 10, nothing game, there's been some competitive games with the NHLers in it. And sure, uh, sure. yeah, I'm, I'm excited that, uh, you know, regular season is only really less than a week. Well, a little more than a week away. So yeah, uh, yeah let's get going. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And to be fair, there's, as we will talk about coming into this a little more, I think uh, lots of teams look at the preseason differently. And uh, as you mentioned, the, the Canucks have more of their, their pro team, more of their A team, I guess um in the lineup for the last few preseason games they look like they're icing pretty close to their opening night lineup um but then you bounce to some other teams like say Chicago Blackhawks and aside from uh Lucas Reichel and Connor Bedard they're icing they're like a prospect tournament team to mm-hmm. some extent like there's there's some uh some differences in opinion of how to use the preseason <laughs> Uh, which is really fun, really interesting. Gives us some good looks at players we haven't seen at this level. So uh, with that, let's let's just jump in with some prospects who have been uh, just really performing quite well. Some are surprising, some are not. Um, but first up is someone that we've talked about a ton this year. And Peter, I'm going to come to you for this one. Zach Benson uh, fell to 13th overall in the 2023 draft. We were all not surprised, but we were a little bummed because we thought maybe he was the one. He was the short king who was going to get drafted where his talent deserved, but not really. <laughs> uh, what, have you, what are your thoughts on how Benson's shown for, for the Sabres? I didn't think that NHL teams would make the same mistake as other players in the past, but they're still making the same mistakes as other players in the past right now. And, you know, it, it, it's... It, whatever their losses, the Buffalo Sabres gain at this point, um, because he's looking like a top 10, let's even throw in top five NHL prospect at this point. Um, mainly just because of the transitional period between, you know, playing in the WHL and playing the way that he is, you know, basically at a higher level in the NHL and he's adapting very well. He's got the IQ, he's got the smarts and he's got the, I want to say, I'm going I'm to say the tenacity because he's very tenacious when on the attack for the puck. Like he's a puck. Mm-hmm. Hound. Like he's always in on the attack. Mm-hmm. And whether he's, yeah, a, again, everyone is going to say, oh, he's a smaller kid. You know, he's, you know, five, five, um, what, what, five, nine, 163. Um, yeah, okay. That is a bit <laughs> of a concern. But can he play at a high standard? 
Yes, he is. He's doing that consistently with all the games that we're seeing. I think he's got about four points for the Sabres in the preseason. And I don't know about you, but sir, for someone who hasn't that whole lot of pro experience to do that already, he's showing great promise for the Sabres at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's good to see also that um, they're rewarding his his great play so far. Like in, in a, a recent preseason game, he played – um, not the whole game, but a lot of minutes on the top line. Mm. Uh, but this isn't just a preseason top line. It was Jeff Skinner and Tage Thompson and Zach Benson. Mm-hmm. That was the top line. Um, he's shown just his ability to drive play and to forecheck and, and take pucks back and keep control for his team uh, is really strong, as we saw throughout junior. Um, even even his biggest defenders, though, I don't think expected him to to excel this much this quick um who knows by the time this episode comes out several of these, of these players that we're going to talk about i'm sure will have already been sent down to junior or the ahl or anything like that there's a good chance that benson still i think probably it's more than likely that he spends the rest of this year in the whl again uh just to be basically the best player there probably um but the fact that there's even like a question that he could maybe just jump right into the Sabres lineup, especially with um, a couple injuries in their, their forward group. That's pretty wild. So uh, it's been a really great start for him. Um, another Sabre uh, who I'd like to ask you about Matt is Devin Levi. I know you, you're a fan and you, uh, you were our, our goaltending prospect <laughs> list writer this year. So uh, what are your thoughts on Levi so far in the preseason? He's, he's um, proving me right. So I, uh, you know, I've had him a second <laughs> in that on the rankings as we talked about in the last episode, and he's shown why he is. And that's, mm-hmm. uh, I think, at this point, he's the starter for the Buffalo Sabers. I think that's going into the season. He's gonna he's gonna get to that mantle. He'll start the first game. Um, he, you know, I, I think everyone's just gotta stop underestimating this guy. Uh, we just talked about an undersized guy. Uh, this is another one. Um, not as mm-hmm. undersized, but for a goaltender, he is. Um, but he he's just continuing on from that, uh, you know, from the end of the season where he looked really strong uh, to start this season. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's in that, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say, I'm not saying Vesna, but in like that part where you're, no one's going to think less of what he is. That this He's a solid goaltender at the NHL level. And yes, it's preseason, but it's a good start that he's he's starting well and i think he'll just he'll just continue that on to the regular season right too mhm absolutely i mean it's basically unheard of in like the modern nhl for a goaltender to go from any level below pro hockey and just jump right into the nhl and succeed um like even guys like jake ottinger or jeremy swayman who made it to the nhl pretty quickly um, they saw a lot of pro shots in the AHL um, and had to develop and, and get used to it and and uh, be able to beat that. Uh, but Devin Levi might be the exception. No guarantees yet, um, but he could be the exception. He's he's looked great. Um, to be fair, I think one of his preseason games was against a Boston team with very little NHL talent, but that's still pro talent because most of those guys are in in the AHL. So just a, a great start just exactly what you'd hope to see from him at this point basically hopefully you can keep it going though uh, that'd be a ton of fun to watch uh it's always fun to have goalies in the calder trophy race in my opinion mm-hmm. um okay we're gonna move to the maple leafs here um peter i'm not even gonna try i'm gonna just leave you here i want i want your thoughts on easton cowan i know that we all we, we're all doing that roller coaster post draft of like, <laughs> what were they thinking? And now we're like, mm-hmm. they're geniuses. <laughs> and maybe the truth is probably in the middle somewhere. Yeah. But what are your yeah. thoughts on on Cowan through training camp and preseason? Yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm still in the middle. Like, listen, they were smart enough to bet on him because they're starting to reap the rewards of that. You know, you saw it at the development camp. You saw it at the prospect tournament where he was legit supposed to be one of their top players, and he was one of their top players. Mm-hmm. Many wondered how he was going to fare during, you know, this preseason where he doesn't have the NHL experience, where someone like Matthew Nyes has or like other prospects that have been in the AHL or like have gotten a taste of pro hockey already. Mm-hmm. But I mean, 
it, it, it's what you expected. It's what you saw during those previous tournaments and what you're seeing right now with Easton Cowan. The high end speed. He's got so, he I he had good edges before, but he's had like fantastic edge work and like trying to maintain his balance with the puck. There are a couple instances where he loses control. You know, he's maintaining his balance and he still manages to maintain control and get a shot off. Um, you know, he's relentless. He, I talk about Zach Benson and his uh, pursuit of the puck. He's always on the attack. He's got an active stick and is able to quickly transition. And he's seeing, we're seeing that in every single game that he's played so far. And in the first one, when he scored that goal, I was just like, you know what? And yeah, it was kind of like a, you know, power play. He was in the bumper spot, but it was a great read from down low. I believe it was Noah Gregor that just chipped in the pass to it and, and he got the shot off. But yeah, um, obviously you still want to take this in stride. You know, this is a prospect that doesn't have that whole experience. We know he's going to London. We know he's most likely going to dominate mm-hmm. that level, but you can't help that if you're the Maple Leafs coaching staff, you liked what you saw during the summer and even right now with Easton Cowan's game because he's got a lot of upside potentially. And again, the smarts, the speed, the skill, the hands, it, it, it's all there. And it's just a matter of him, you know, getting up into the lineup and getting more opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he he was someone who shone as his draft year wore on um, and he has kept that momentum going like he he's looked excellent to start the year um hopefully he has a great great year in london and who knows like a year from now we could be talking about him hopping into the lineup possibly mm-hmm. who knows um I, I agree with some of the like some of the stylistic comparisons with him and benson i, I can see some similarities there obviously doesn't have like the offensive uh, upside that benson does as like a top line contributor necessarily but um if he can become like this would still be a pretty high projection but if he could become like a zach hyman like top six play yeah. driving mm-hmm. just puck guy uh puck possession guy that would be huge i mean i'm sure toronto wishes they had someone like zach hyman right now um <laughs> th- anyway <laughs> they're fine <laughs> um uh peter i'm i'm curious to your thoughts also on fraser minton um we've talked about him a bit here um off and on but uh, I've seen seen some of his play, and apparently he's been uh, surprising several Leafs fans that weren't expecting to get this much out of him. Yeah, with Minton, like he he's forming great chemistry with Matthew Nyes because they've been paired up quite a bit, and you're seeing them start to generate that chemistry, and they have that makings of a potential pairing down the line in the future and yeah when the maple leafs drafted him he had the smarts he he was known for his two-way play his physicality his shot um you know he was taking that big step this season with 67 points with the blazers but you know he has seen some injuries as well now it seems like you know he's kind of got healthy you know he's maintaining his spot in the lineup and you know, kind of like, kind of like uh, with nice with that power forward game. He has that mentality. He has the IQ, the ability to separate the puck from the opponent, and using the size to his advantage very well. And the big thing for me, it was, you know, again, kind of like every other prospect, is how he, how, how quickly he was able to adapt into a new situation. Where, yeah, we seen him at the prospect tournament. We knew he was going to play well. Kind of like how and what was he going to do this time around? Um, he's impressed every step of the way. And, you know, that again, the Maple Leafs are having players with that puck hounding mentality and they have three top three or the three top prospects at this point are playing with that intensity and that energy that, you know, they want the puck on their stick and he's getting every chance to succeed in on both sides of the puck right now. And I'm, I'm, lo- I'm loving everything from Minton. I think he's going to compete sooner for a spot rather than later based on his trajectory and his development. Yeah, I have to agree. I think I think he's been a, a really pleasant surprise, um, developing a little quicker than I expected personally. Um, and when you're a team like Toronto that you know has moved out as much significant draft capital as they have in the last few years, which isn't a crazy amount compared to some contenders, mm-hmm. uh, but it's significant. And so to find guys throughout the draft who look like real contributors could be huge. Um, aside from Matthew Nyes and Easton Cow and these guys who take in the first round, stuff like that. Um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna move on here to uh, a couple of Red Wings prospects. Uh, but actually, before I jump into those, Matt, I'm I'm curious. Uh, you you had an article come out recently about Cross Hannis, I believe, Red Wings prospect who uh, played in the AHL last year, 
went down with injury and uh, is trying to come back into action right now in the preseason. Uh, any thoughts on how he's played so far to start this year? I, I loved him at Traverse City. He played uh, on the top line with Elmer Soderblom and looked really good with him. I uh, had a goal, I believe, the last preseason game for the Red Wings. And uh, he's looked really good. I think he's going to end up being – he won't make the team – but I think he's gonna he's gonna dominate with Grand Rapids. He he had a really good start to the season last year, but like you said, mm-hmm. that injury just really derailed it and uh, had like six goals before the end of November, and then got hurt, and then came back, and then was shut mm-hmm. down for her shoulder surgery, and looked looks like he's fully recovered now and uh, ready to kind of be that top line guy in Grand Rapids and maybe get a couple call-ups during the season. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do this season. Hopefully can, hopefully can stay healthy and that shoulder Mm -hmm. doesn't give him any more problems because I think he's kind of a bit of an underrated prospect uh, for the Red Wings second round pick uh, formally, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what he can do. Yeah, absolutely. He doesn't, he, he's unlikely to be like a, a huge impact player in the NHL. But it doesn't actually feel like he's that far off from being like a good bottom six player, bottom six forward um, for Detroit. Uh, Looked really good last year. I agree. He's looked really solid so far. Um, The Grand Rapids Griffins are going to be a really young team, but they're going to be really talented. So either it's going to go really well or really weird. So (laughs) it should be a fun team to watch in the AHL regardless. Um, Another Red Wings prospect I'll just mention briefly here is Nate Danielson. Anyone who's listened to this podcast for longer than two episodes knows that I've been a big fan of his for quite some time and that I am now turning into, I don't know, I'm just going to be the most annoying person you know now that people in the Red Wings world uh, are no longer terrified at the fact that the Red Wings took Danielson and instead are like really excited about it because he looks excellent. Uh, Now I'm just going to. I'm just going to brag all the time that I wanted them to take him regardless. And I was happy about the pick. I thought it was a good pick. And now everyone else thinks it's a good pick. So (laughs) I'm just going to keep bragging about that. But uh, Danielson has looked phenomenal. Um, If the Red Wings had the roster right now that they did like 12 months ago, I think there's a pretty good chance he'd make Mm -hmm. the NHL roster right out of out of training camp and preseason. However, they've continued to add depth and it doesn't really make a lot of sense to put him on the team unless he's like your fourth line left wing. But then he bumps Soderblom or Beargren out of the lineup, which seems like a strange choice. So he's going almost certainly going to go back to the Brandon Wheat Kings in the WHL um, where he should dominate if he can keep up the play he's shown here. Um, He's been an excellent two-way player. Uh, watching uh, the preseason game recently against the Blackhawks, where in the late stages of the game, Blackhawks had a power play uh, and he stole the puck from Connor Bedard, just one-on-one stole the puck, uh, made a pass, I think, to Edvinson, Simon Edvinson, who had a a really good scoring chance shorthanded. Danielson looks really good. So um, excellent showing for him. Good chance he makes the NHL team out of training camp next year uh, with a little... A little more space in the lineup, maybe uh, tailored for for him. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt, I'll come to you next on one here. Uh, David Reinbacher for the Montreal Canadiens. They have, as they have for several years now, lots of good young players at their training camp and um, playing through the preseason. Lots have been sent out already with Reinbacher. He's already been loaned back to uh, the Swiss League. He's going to he's going to play same place he played uh, his draft season. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, and and if you've seen too much of what he's played, how, how have you thought he looked so far this year? I mean, you know, information coming out of Montreal, it looked good, but I, I think it was the right choice to send him out, send him back to Switzerland. I mean, mm-hmm. really, is he going to play a ton uh, to to a point where you're like, yeah, he'll play in the top four. Um you know, and a team that Montreal's got, you know, we've mentioned it on season preview show and uh, that they have a young blue line. I mean, they do without Ryan Barker. They've got a young blue line. Um, I don't think it's good for him to play in the NHL this season. I think, you know, go back to Switzerland. He gets he'll get top pairing minutes. He'll play a ton um, in mm-hmm. a league that's pretty good. Look, we've mentioned uh, multiple times in the show that this is like a high end league over there. 
that mm -hmm. he's going to end up being, you know, better development over there rather than playing in the NHL on a team that, I mean, looking like they're not going to be a very good team again this season. Yeah. I, I think it's probably best for him just to, you know, get the, get the minutes and, uh, and develop over there. Yeah, I, I have to agree. I think it's the right call. Um, he was playing top four minutes, special teams, all that stuff in his draft year. And you can only expect that to, his his role there to increase um, rather than if you bring him to North America, it's likely to decrease a fair bit. So give him those reps and uh, send him off with some lessons and some stuff to work on and uh, and and see where he's at a year from now. I think, I think it's the right call as well. Uh, Peter, uh, I'll come back to you here and then we'll take a, a quick break after this. Um, we're we're going to talk about the Columbus Blue Jackets here quick. They've another team that has a ton of great young players, um, guys that uh, maybe we didn't expect to be this seriously contending for NHL spots, um, but a really great prospect pool. We've talked about them plenty. Um, the one obvious name here, though, is Adam Fantilli. Uh, what are your thoughts on on Fantilli through the preseason? Do you think he's ready for the NHL? Yeah, I mean, he's got the sense, he's got the size, he's got the skill, the work ethic, the IQ of being a NHLer. And I think aside from Connor Bedard, I think you're already looking at Adam Fantilli being the one ready for the next step. Um, yeah, you know, what's the sense of him going back for another season in college other than to probably win a championship because he's just going to tear it up yeah. there, right? Yeah. Um, I honestly think that, yeah, he's just absolutely dominant and he's what this team needs as that, you know, uh, you know, competitive goal scoring center that, you know, other teams there are other teams that are like in the playoffs have. And obviously we saw previously they were building from the blue line out. We saw them take big names like Denton Matejchuk, uh, you know, David Juracek, Car uh, Carson Kuhlmans. They have a solid foundation already. I'm not even going to go to like, you know, Stanislav, Stanislav Volzil from like a few years back because they got mm -hmm. solid names on the back on the back end. And now you have Fantilli and you have another young group of core players coming up. And this is basically, you know, the, mo the youth movement for the Columbus Blue Jackets because a lot of their top names – are standing out and i'm just going to throw an honorable mention to jordan dume because mm -hmm. he has looked absolutely dominant um at the queue at the rookie tournaments he's been standing out big time but yeah i know i was talking about adam fantilli uh and how he's ready for the moment how he's primed to be you know a very dominant and key factor but i mean there there are so many players that you could pick from this blue jackets you know system that can have just a high level impact as fantilli yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's ready for the NHL. Whether whether he's a star right away or not um, doesn't really make a huge difference to me. It just it feels pretty clear at this point that he's probably the best center on that team today. Um, not necessarily going to be the one C right out of the gate, but he's going to have some some good pieces to work with and uh, lots more coming up. You, you mentioned David Yerichek. He seems like a lock to be in the lineup. He should have been last year, but they were tanking. Um, and so they gave him the big minutes in the AHL, which isn't wrong necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, it does also feel like um, coming out of training camp and preseason, Denton Matejchuk is probably going to at least get a look to start the year in the NHL. He could get like the the nine game tryout at the start of the year and then sent, get sent back to junior. Sometimes that happens. Um, but uh, Pascal Vincent, the, the head coach, for the Blue Jackets for the last week and a half. Um, he said verbatim that uh, Denton Matejic had an amazing tournament or an amazing preseason so far. Um, so that's pretty good praise from your head coach. Um, they brought in some more experienced defenders uh, this offseason. So hopefully they can uh, they can afford or they they trust two young defenders in Yerichek and Matejic to come in this coming year, but Matejchuk has been phenomenal. I think it'd be pretty hard to count him out at this point. Uh, you'd be making your team worse <laughs> or making that team worse at least. Um, all right. So we're going to take a quick break here, uh, but we'll be right back with a few more uh, prospects playing through the preseason this year uh, after a quick word from the hockey writers. 
Interested in writing for the Hockey Raiders? If you have experience writing about hockey, are passionate about the sport, and are looking to take your writing to the next level, the Hockey Raiders could be the place for you. Here at THW, you will have the opportunity to hone your craft at one of the world's largest and most respected hockey publishers. You will have control over what you write, be able to seek out media credentials, and be supported by a large network of writers and editors. Plus, you'll get paid for doing it. If you're interested and want to know more about team openings and requirements, please visit the Write for THW page on the Hockey Raiders website. A link to that page is also listed in the description. All right. And so we're going to hop back in with the Arizona Coyotes here. Um, and the biggest name, I mean, the biggest name period on this team is Logan Cooley. But throughout the preseason, especially, uh, also, especially if you look at the opening <laughs> night of the preseason in the uh, the global series out in, in Australia, where he had that just wicked goal. Uh, but Peter, what are your thoughts on on Logan Cooley? You feel like he's he's ready and he's going to be in a big role this year, probably, or, or where do you think he stands right now? Ah, uh, I mean, I still think the Coyotes are still going to be towards the bottom. I think they'll be a little bit more competitive, given given the names that are coming up, because you also have like you know Dylan Genther, um, a lot of other prospects, you know, starting to make a name for themselves right now. But I think you know Cooley is going to be one of the main pieces that I think can be a main fixture in their top six, whether he's going to be top line center, don't know, but maybe he'll get those looks and opportunities later on because he's very confident in his game, Uh, you know, very solid sound two way, but he's very quick and very gifted offensively. You know, he's very quick to manipulating the open space as we saw, you know, that insane, you know, goal of the year candidate in the very first preseason game in Australia. (laughs) Um, it, it, it's amazing what he can do in this hockey sense and the awareness that he has to always just get to the middle of the ice and he's always in control mm-hmm. and always finding or turning something or turning nothing into something rather. And he's always getting a high, high scoring chance or a high danger opportunity on that because he's just so dangerous and lethal. And, you know, the coyote, the coyotes, I mean, similar to like, you know, the Chicago Blackhawks, um, Columbus Blue Jackets, all these other teams that needed a high quality, high end center. Cooley's definitely going to be that guy. And I think obviously it's still early to tell right now. I was still a big believer of Shane Wright. Again, different Mm -hmm. player compared to Logan Cooley, but it's looking like, you know, the Coyotes made the right decision and they may get the player that could have the better career because Mm -hmm. of the impact and the rewards they're starting to get right now with Cooley. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, they're very different styles and very different players between Cooley and Wright but um they could they could both have excellent careers and the Coyotes would still be pretty thrilled with what they get Mm -hmm. um Cooley's going to be an offensive force um jury's still out on how his his two-way game and his physical play will hold up in the NHL um especially over the course of a long season um but most players grow into that more he's still pretty young He's got it. I, I don't have it in front of me, but I'm sure he's 20 or 19. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just kind of absurd to expect him to be fully ready for the physicality of the NHL. Most most aren't It's the exceptions that are are ready for that. But, but yeah, I agree. Cooley looks like um, while the, the Coyotes aren't going to be super competitive this year, he's he's going to be a good piece for them right away and a bigger piece going forward the next good Arizona Coyotes team is probably going to have Logan Cooley as the top line center. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's move on to the Chicago Blackhawks who have lots of players we could talk about realistically. Um, there's the obvious one, Connor Bedard, but I don't even want to talk about him because it's just too <laughs> obvious. It's like, yes, he's going to be great answer. this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's shown some really good moments here and there. It's the puck skills and the shot. That's what you expect from Bedard. And he's shown it against better competition. Uh, and he's had a little bit more trouble getting to the middle, which is to be expected. Mm-hmm. He's not playing against junior defenses anymore. Um, but he'll adapt. The best shooters adapt, and he will. Um, so, yeah, you know Connor Bedard. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm going to move on to Kevin Krachinski, actually, who... I think has given himself a really good chance of uh, cracking the NHL lineup to start the year. Uh, Matt, what are your thoughts on Korchinski? Do you think he's got a, got a chance to play for the Blackhawks this year? I definitely do. I think the one thing about him is that he's looked, he's looked good uh, paired with, uh, with some good NHL players. I mean, NHL defensemen. 
I believe he was paired with Seth Jones uh, a bit too. And, you know, the one thing about him is we've talked about him on the show quite a bit is that he's a very good puck moving defenseman, uh, very poised to look really like Thunderbirds. He dominated the WHL. Uh, I mean, it was expected he should. Uh, and that Thunderbirds team was just insanely stacked. But, you know, he's looked really good in the preseason. It looks like he's an NHL defenseman. And the one thing, just like we talked about the Montreal Canadiens blue line, the Blackhawks blue line is going to be really young as well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and the one thing about uh, Korczynski is that he can actually be that uh, that type of guy that maybe starts that new core of defense. Uh, another guy I want to kind of just throw it in the same tandem as Korczynski is Nolan Allen. Uh, he's mm-hmm. looked really good in the preseason as well. And he could even make the team. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of him being paired with Seth Jones. I'm mixing the two defensemen. Um, but they both have looked looked good for the Blackhawks. And they're going to be the the nucleus of this new core of, uh, of defense that the Blackhawks have to start creating. Because, I mean, Seth Jones will be going to be here for a long time because of his contract. But yeah. you're going to have to have some other young defensemen kind of working behind him. And I think those two are going to be the two guys that are going to start that. So I'm excited to see Korchinski. I think he does make the lineup. Um, we'll see if he ultimately does, but I think he's put mm-hmm. himself in a great position to do so. Yeah, for sure. It it definitely feels like he's put himself in the, in the spot where it's on the Blackhawks to, to decide if, um, you know, if, if his weaknesses uh, will be better developed in the NHL this year with, the training team and with all the coaching staff and everything like that, or better spent absolutely tearing up the WHL again, um, having a little more freedom and a little more um, space to make mistakes. Maybe um, there's, there's a balance there and and that's on, on them to decide. That's why they get paid the big bucks. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens with Korczynski. Uh Next we'll move on to the flames and uh, the, the player I want to talk about most here. Um, they've got several young slightly undersized wingers um, in Pelletier, Zeri, and Coronado. But Peter, I want to talk about Matt Coronado here. Uh, what are your thoughts on him coming into this season? Do you think he's he's an NHL player right out the gate? Uh, do you think he's going to be super impactful? Or where do you think he lands on that spectrum? Uh, I, I, he's definitely got the package. He's got the skill set, the hands, the creativity, the, uh, the offensive prowess in the offensive zone. Like he, like he looks like he's ready for the next step. I think the flames may just want to get him a little bit more comfortable at the pro level, maybe a little time seasoning up a little bit um, in the AHL. Um, wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, mm-hmm. Cause you know, the flames depth is still pretty solid at this point. You look at the depth chart right now. Um, you know, Coronado is on the right side. Um, then again, you're looking at the right side right now. It is kind of weak. Could he battle for a spot if it kind of like pushes uh, the the management and the coaching staff's hand where maybe they're like, you know what? He's too good for that. Let's give him the chance and then maybe decide that later on. But um, I think maybe the best thing would still to just keep him in the minors for the time being, let him develop, let him, you know, get a little bit more acclimated to the pro level. Cause I believe he only has one game under his belt. And that was still after a call up last year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Only one game, but you know what? Eight points in 10 world championship games uh, against senior competition. Not bad. Definitely mm-hmm. not bad at all. And if you're the Calgary flames, you're looking at that as a good indicator where maybe he is ready for the pro level, he is ready to be a full-time NHLer, and you know there are probably going to be some you know hiccups along the road with his game. But you know what? That's to be expected mm-hmm. with a young player. But you know he's looked very confident. He's looked very determined, and I think that you know it could go either way with him with how he starts the season. I definitely think he'll get the nine games or the nine game tryout before anything else to make a decision. But I think he'll succeed. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Like you said, he only had a, a really short NHL uh, stint at the end of last year. Um, looked good at the World Championships. Um, as we said before, it was during it, this was during the game where uh, the Canucks iced a pretty weak lineup comparatively. But he mm-hmm. did have a hat trick, I believe, in that yeah. first game against the Canucks. Um, he's looked good elsewhere, like aside from that. Um, they do have Ryan Huska as the head coach now there who 
um, has experience with the um, the AHL team there. So he's a little, I, I, I at least expect him to be more likely to play young players than Sutter was. Um, and that's remember a pretty names. low bar though yeah, yeah remember their names too. <laughs> it's a pretty low bar but i'm expecting he'll be more willing to to give ice time to young mm-hmm. players um granted there are several that could be fighting for the same spot um uh, unfortunately for pelletier he went down with a, a major shoulder injury in the preseason mm-hmm. uh, but for coronado that kind of means the opportunity is a little larger um and i if i was a betting man which i am not um <laughs> i would I would say Coronado starts the year in Calgary, kind of like you were saying, Peter, uh, with the chance of going down to the AHL for sure, um, because the Flames are in such a strange spot um, with their expectations being so high last year and failing to meet those expectations by a wide margin. um, They have some some soul searching to do as a team, as a franchise. Um, And if they're bad enough, maybe that means that they keep him in the lineup. If they're really good and he's in the lineup, maybe they keep him. There's a lot of possibilities in the middle there. Um, And a lot of those include some time with the Calgary Wranglers, but um, I'm excited to see what we get from Coronado. Um, One last player here that has just blown my mind, not necessarily by his play. He's been good, but um, just the opportunity he's being given so far. And so Matt, I'll come to you on this one as our, as our Canucks representative here. Uh, Cole McWard, I believe he has five NHL games to his name at the moment. No AHL games, lots of college hockey. Um, was not seen as a really high-end player. Um, was a college free agent that the Canucks picked up last spring. Um, and it kind of looks like he's picked up the spot on the right side uh, next to Quinn Hughes, which is one of the the more cushy spots you could you could dream of as a as a college free agent. Uh, coming into pro hockey but uh, what are your thoughts on McWard and and the spot it kind of looks like he's solidifying yeah he's he's a bit of a bit of a surprise he was really good uh, in uh, you know young stars he was one of the standouts I thought okay it's against young guys of course he's going to stand out because he's played in the NHL Um, that was a bit of expected but then he gets into preseason and uh, and then they start putting him with Quinn Hughes like you said and he's looked okay he's looked fine um, took a few penalties against Edmonton, which is not good. You don't want to be taking penalties, which means he's chasing the game a bit. But that, mm-hmm. I mean, they were hooking and holding, which I don't like. I don't like those ones. Means you were beat. Um, yeah. But, you know, the thing is, it's like that happens. Uh, we see Tyler Myers taking those penalties all the time uh, in, in a game. So, I mean, it's not like it's it's that'll keep him out of it. But they haven't he hasn't lost confidence in the coaching staff because in in practice yesterday he's still with Quinn Hughes and he survived all the roster cuts that sent Akito Hirose who I thought had the better chance of making the team because he's he's looked he looked better last season uh he's looked good in the he hasn't really gotten any preseason games which was kind of surprising to me um, but McWard is just mm-hmm. impressed and playing with a skilled guy like Quinn Hughes it's like you have to be pretty good to play with a guy like that. And he's a right-hand shot, so he fits um, with the right side there. No one has to play their offside. So, I mean, you know, he moves the puck well. And uh, I, I don't know. I, it's a good good thing to to see if it can work And early on. I mean, he may not stay there. Mm-hmm. I think ultimately it's going to be Carson Soucy with Hughes um, during the season. But... Um, if he works, that just spreads your defense out, and you've got three really solid pairings. Um, but I've been impressed with Nick Ward. He's been he's been a pleasant surprise in training camp, and uh, I'm hoping that he can just continue. Yeah, absolutely. I think we we talk about it with forwards more often, um, but it's true for defenders that playing with a star player is a skill. Being able to play well with stars, um, that's what you saw with Luke Shen in Vancouver with Quinn Hughes. Um, not a top pairing caliber defenseman on his own, um, but Quinn Hughes was so good that Shen just had to handle the rest of the things, which isn't a lot because Quinn Hughes handles a lot of it. Um, so you just have to be able to be the last man back and do your best to to let Quinn do whatever he whatever he needs. Um, and if McWard can do that, then cool. If they can spread out their spread out their talent, have more depth. Um, Ultimately, you could have a 
dominant top pairing if you had a better player in that spot, but you can have a really good top pairing and then better depth than you would otherwise. So it's one way to take it. It's I'll be interested to see um, how much of a chance McWard has with, with Hughes throughout this year. Um, if he starts there, if he has to earn that spot again, something like that, but some, something interesting I wanted to note there. All right. So we are going to uh, wrap up our show now, as we like to do each week with our prospect of the week. Uh, and Matt, I've got you first on here. You're first in front of my eyes and I can't change my mind. So you're first up. <laughs> Who do you got? Who's your prospect of the week? I just talked about a Canucks defensive prospect and talk about another one. Uh, he's sent to the sent back to the OHL, but he's got off to a great start. Kirill Kudryatsev. I mm-hmm. He's got already three points in his first uh, two games or four points in his first two, I believe it is. Uh, and no, it is three, but whatever. It's still really good. Um, he had a goal in his first game or, or assist in his first game. And uh, yeah, he's got to a great start and uh, he looked good in pre and hadn't didn't get any preseason games, but he did look good in training camp and the scrimmages and at the prospect tournament. So I, I'm excited to see what he can do in the OHL this season. Looks like he's off to a you know torrid start. What is he on pace for? What like a crazy on pace numbers oh, when you're <laughs> yeah. you're over you're over a point a game already. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, he's got up to a great start, and I'm I'm excited to keep following him throughout the prospect reports I'll be putting out. So um, yeah, Kudryatsev, prospect of the week. Nice, that's a really good one. Um, I'll go with another. I mean, he doesn't doesn't play in North America, but another Russian player here. Uh, Matvey Michkov is someone I want to give a shout out to. Um, lots was made about his struggle to get into the the lineup for SKA St. Petersburg. He got into one game, I believe, barely played. Uh, was loaned to HK Sochi, where he played his, his draft season last year. Um, and in his first eight games, he has 10 points and four goals. Three of those points came today the day we recorded this against SKA St. Petersburg um and Soshi actually beat St. Petersburg in St. Petersburg for the first time in 6 years upset so can you imagine uh being like one of the man- someone in management for St. Petersburg watching this kid that you wouldn't play and sent him off to the horrible <laughs> team in the league the ugly duckling the ugly stepsister <laughs> whatever or your um, team up and yeah, he comes back and just destroys you. So uh, he's had a really great start. Um, I think it'd be really funny if they they recalled him like before his next game with Sochi, and they're like, okay, maybe maybe you should play for us instead. I'll we'll um, give you the top but, six minutes. But uh, yeah, maybe maybe that's enough to earn it. But we'll see how long it takes for him to earn that that trust. But I, he's getting there for sure. He, he's looked excellent so far. He looks like the Michkov we we know and love. Uh, Peter, I'll come to you last here. Who's your prospect of the week? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm never usually a homer, but I'm going to pick up Maple Leafs prospect, but it's not one that you would expect. And it's Miko Kokonen. Um, mm. Underrated name in the Maple Leafs system, especially on defense. You really don't see a lot or hear his name a lot because he's not as flashy as, you know, a Topi Niemela or, you know, the has like a high off, not high offensive ceiling, but the offensive game that other players have in the system. Mm -hmm. He's more of a well-rounded steady shutdown two way type of defenseman. And if he's able to get it on the offense, great. But during the preseason, he has looked fantastic in the opportunities that he's been given and he's looked calm. He's looked cool. He hasn't panicked in any situation, especially within his own end. He's strong at like, you know, breaking up plays, you know, with his uh, one-on-one coverage. And, you know, according to TSN's Mark Masters, Keith said that he's been very, very solid all the way through. You look at where he was last year to now, it's been remarkable. Um, So this is a player that's been flying under the radar for the Maple Leafs in their prospect system. But now he's starting to showcase what he can do and... You know, if he's able to be a solid, you know, shut down third pairing defender with, you know, the ability to kill penalties and, you know, hold down a lead, get into the lane and block shots. This is a guy that can do it all because he's looking very strong and very steady at the moment for the Maple Leafs. And I believe he's also at the time of recording. I believe he's getting into another game right now. So the Maple Leafs are getting him a look with Mm -hmm. their main roster. So that's going to be mm-hmm. interesting to see what he can do. And, you know, he's looking very good. So he's going to be my prospect of the week. Nice. That's a great one. I, I, uh, 
there's always a surprise player that that really well not always but there's often surprise players in the preseason mm-hmm. that that when coaches get to see them with NHL teammates they're like wait a second <laughs> maybe maybe he's better than i thought he was <laughs> um and so hopefully Kakanen can can do that for Toronto um at very least another great season with the Marlies would be would be some progress there and uh i think he's he's at least got that lined up for sure I want to right. correct my yeah, points, so it's four points. <laughs> it's in two four games. points in two games. There you go. Not bad. Not a bad start. <laughs> Not bad at all. And nice. the, the Sioux Greyhounds have been just dominant in their first two, 11 to three and seven to five. Of the... <laughs> Ooh, yikes. Yikes. Uh, I mean, on the topic of crazy stat lines, um, you've got uh, someone who we'll talk about more this year, Cole Iserman, top prospect for 2024. I believe he has 10 goals in his first eight games of the year for the USA uh, NTDP. He might, it might be better than that, to be honest <laughs> with you. Um, he's been phenomenal to start and he looks like he's, uh, he's really stalking Cole Caulfield's goal record for uh, the mm-hmm. NTDP. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, projected yeah. 135 goals. <laughs> <laughs> projected. That's nasty. I hate that. I, I love that, but that's also just, that's not real. I, that's not real. <laughs> and 15 assists too. So let's see. Uh, 15, what, wow. Let, let's see what's He's more. Really passing uh, it a lot now. Let's see what's more realistic at that point. <laughs> well, yeah, honestly. Kud- Kudriatsev's on pace for 136 points. So Okay, yeah. so anything can happen. Gotcha. <laughs> Love these early projected on pace stats. <laughs> They're my favorite thing. I, oh, I love absolutely. them so much. It's really fun. And it's especially fun when someone actually hits it. Like a week or two into the last season when Bedard's projected stats were just like stupid high. Yeah. It's like, no way he's going to hit that. He's going to be great, but he's not going to get like 70 goals and 70 <laughs> assists. And... and then he does exactly that. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty fun. Like his numbers at the end of the year looked like projected stats after like one good game. But nope, he's just elite anyway <laughs> all right well that's gonna do it for us this week thank you all for tuning in to another episode of prospect corner make sure you subscribe to the hockey writers youtube channel to make sure you catch all of our new episodes and also make sure you check out our site thehockeywriters.com for tons of nhl draft and prospect coverage thank you peter and matt as always and thank you all for joining us on this week's edition of prospect corner we'll see you next time